So people are very willing to follow the lead of authorities. Suppose you are that authority. The implication is you need to get your background, experience, and credentials in the minds of the people you want to influence before you begin the process of influencing them. They need to know that first because they want to follow the advice of, <clears throat> of genuine experts. But that's easier said than done, isn't it? You can't walk into someone's office, sit down at the desk and say, before we begin, let me tell you just how great I really am. <laughs> it goes against all the rules. I had this, that problem this morning. I count myself as knowledgeable about the influence process, persuasion, social influence. But if I had stepped up on this stage and said, before we begin, let me tell you how many books I've sold. Let me tell you how many languages those books are in. Let me tell you which universities I've, sp I've taught at. Here's what you would remember primarily about our time together. What a jerk this guy <laughs> Cialdini was. What a self-promoting jerk he was. So what did I do instead? I asked Ben to do it for me. <laughs> Therefore, you are honestly informed about my background and credentials, but I didn't have to seem like a braggart, a boastful braggart in the process. That's what I'm going to ask you to do. For people who don't know about your genuine background and experience and knowledge, competence, find a third party who knows both of you, who can send that message, who can say, oh, I've dealt with Hans, I've dealt with Ben, I've dealt with Pachel. That's a smart person. This is a well-credentialed uh, uh, individual. That information coming from a third party will be more effective than what you can provide about yourself.